Hey, hey, welcome back to another episode of the Epic Meta Podcast. We're your hosts, Tang and George. George and Tang. On today's episode, we're going to be covering the Christmas story or a Christmas story. George, is that, no, is that correct? It's, it's called a, no, it's called <laughs> a Christmas Carol. A Christmas by Carol. Charles Dickens. Oh my God, I am messing it up uh, already. But uh, thank you for correcting. The Christmas story was a horrible movie made uh, in the, I don't know, 80s. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't really respect people who like that movie. (laughs) Well, I I, I mix up the different, I guess, uh, myths or stories of all the Christmases together. I don't know how I... I don't know how, when or where I come across Christmas Carol, but I knew about, you know, Scrooge and, and whatnot uh, from, I guess, just the normal cultural stuff uh, at some point. And, you know, there's so many different remakes and versions of this uh, story. I think uh, tons of movie industry stuff that they do, like uh, I'm thinking of Matthew McConaughey, romantic comedy, a terrible movie, where it's like a spin off of this. And so I, mm-hmm. I've heard about or know about this story. I don't remember how I learned about Tiny Tim, but I know about him before I even read this story or connected him with this. But uh, I, I have and I've done it. Uh, so yeah, so that's, I guess that's where I'm coming from. I, I was already exposed to Christmas Carol before I even knew it was Christmas Carol. You know, it's so so crazy. Uh, but. Uh, you're, you're a fan. Tell us uh, why or when did you come across Christmas Carol? Like maybe in, in school oh. or something? No, I mean, it, it's just a something I've known all my life. <laughs> I, I, okay. I don't know that I read the original Charles Dickens version until maybe college or something like that. But, oh, um, okay. I remember as a kid just watching the various – there were – several different versions of it as you yeah. to. okay so you're, um, you're coming from the same angle where you're you already know about it before you even read it yeah I, yeah that's true but i feel like i connect with the story pretty deeply I, mm-hmm. I maybe i did more so a few years back um but the whole story of redemption and and supernatural in- intervention mm-hmm like, I you like it, it a lot. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's why I got uh, reading Charles Dickens. Uh, you know, it's pretty much just a redemption arc. Uh, but you know, I guess it's redeeming when I was a kid and saw whatever movies or cartoons I saw and kind of understood as a you know a very seasonal Christmas heartwarming story uh, to redeem yourself and and fix yourself for for the year and be a decent person. But I guess I grew out of it. I, I imagine I'm trying to remember the first time or my first reaction. And I think it was, it's not, uh, yeah, it's some version of it. I, I liked it. You know, it was cool. Uh, definitely very new or different. Like nobody have done this in any other genre or I can think of. Uh, and so I just, I think this is why it was so, it was so good of a concept that, um, that has a lot of following, right? You're not the only one that likes it, so I yeah. Think... And it's it's certainly captured the popular imagination. I mean, it was <laughs> written in the 1800s and mm. is still extremely popular to this very day. So, <laughs> so yeah. Uh, do you want to give synopsis, or do you should we assume everybody knows the story? <laughs> I I know that's how you normally like to do things, but mm-hmm. I. I I believe a synopsis is important, yes. even if everyone's <laughs> familiar with this one. Let's go. Yep. Okay. Well, so... <laughs> All right, the story starts out... Um, it's Christmas Eve. Ebenezer Scrooge is a stingy, miserly, uh, loner-type guy who... He's very wealthy. Mm-hmm. He has some sort of business that I'm not exactly sure what it is. I, I think it's money lending is part of it, but uh, it's they're not very clear on what exactly he does. <laughs> but it, it, see, loaning money to people is part of it. But they spend all their day in this little off. Uh, Scrooge and his his clerk, Bob Cratchit, spend. 
the whole day like writing stuff down in in, in books mm. and i'm not sure exactly what they're writing or what the, you know, why they're doing that or what that has to do with lending money i mean obviously you need to keep track of who you're lending money to and whether they paid you or not but does that take all day long of you know writing in a book yeah <laughs> even in the 1800s I, I, I don't know maybe it does i, I just don't know so anyway, uh, Bob Cratchit is kind of this beaten down, uh, kind of a, uh, he, he doesn't have very much strength to him. He's, uh, he's overpowered by Scrooge's uh, force of personality, and Scrooge is not very nice to him. He doesn't let him heat the office because <laughs> it's too expensive. Um, and uh, he gets, you know, he's always barking orders at him and criticizing <laughs> him and all that kind of stuff. So seven years ago, uh, on the, so the day, the story t takes place on a Christmas Eve, but seven years prior on uh, Christmas Eve, uh, Scrooge's partner, Jacob Marley, had died. Mm -hmm. um, so this is seven years after that. So... Uh, it starts out in Scrooge's office. Um, uh, let's see. Scrooge's uh, nephew comes in and invites him to dinner, and he declines. Scrooge's nephew is his only living relative. He had a sister, Fran, who died um, some time ago. And the nephew's like, well, why, why won't you come to dinner? I don't want... I'm just trying to be nice. And <laughs> Scrooge is like, no, I don't want to. Blah, blah, blah. And uh, and he's like, I hate Christmas and, and all this stuff. So <laughs> he kicks his nephew out. Uh, then uh, two gentlemen come trying to uh, collect money for uh, the poor. And Scrooge says, no, I, I won't give you anything. Uh, and then he chases a caroler, car caroler away, a young boy. And then they close up shop and Scrooge has a, a, a discussion with with Bob Cratchit asking him, you know, okay, I suppose you want all day tomorrow <laughs> off. <laughs> and uh, Bob Cratchit is like, well, you know, it's only once a year. And Scrooge is like a fine excuse for picking a man's pocket every 25th of December. You know? <laughs> so I guess, I guess Bob Cratchit only gets one day off a year. <laughs> and, and Scrooge doesn't even like that. <laughs> so, Scrooge goes home later on, and he um, he sees a, a spectral face of uh, Jacob Marley and his door knocker, and he's he doesn't want to believe that it's true. He goes up into his room and locks himself in, and is eating his gruel, and he hears chains clanking, and it's it's the ghost of Jacob Marley coming to visit him. And there's a lot of discussion as. Uh, about whether Scrooge believes that Jacob Marley is real, which I find interesting. It's as if, uh, like, they can't have the conversation until Scrooge admits that he believes Jacob Marley is real. <laughs> I, and I wonder why um, Dickens goes through the, the trouble of, of making that point. Do you have any thoughts on that? What, like the scene where he uh, saw his partner's face on the door knocker? Is that is that what you're talking no, about? Jacob Marley comes up into the room where Scrooge is sitting. Right. And Scrooge is like, I don't believe you. And, and Jacob Marley's like, well, you have to believe me because I had got... Uh, something to say? I got something to say. Mm -hmm. And uh, Scrooge is like, well, no, I don't believe you. And then Jacob like goes, ah, you know, and tries to scream and scare him and then... Scrooge is like, all right, all right, I believe you. And then and then they continue on with the conversation. Now, you have a blank uh, stare in your face, which yeah. suggests to me that you don't know what I'm talking about. I think I know what you're talking about, but I don't understand the debate around, like, uh, I, to me, that was just an, like another ghost uh, apparition appearing to him. Like, why wouldn't, why, why would the readers not understand or believe that there was a Jacob Marley's ghost? trying to scare uh no 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 jacob marley wants scrooge to believe that what that he is real like and not like a ghost like not like a um a hallucination or a dream oh but 
we're talking about present time, not seven years ago, right? Like, like he this is right after the door knocker scene where he's trying to go home into yeah. his house. Yeah. And, and, and so his partner is dead, obviously. So this is the ghost. Do you not know this scene? <laughs> Ten, I, this is I a pivotal thought, scene in the in the story. So I mean. when I'm listening, I hear a ghost trying to communicate with him. Am I wrong? Okay, I'm going to say this as plainly as I can. <laughs> Scrooge is sitting up in his room, mm -hmm. and the ghost of Jacob Marley appears. Okay, to him yeah, in the so room. the ghost and Jacob and the ghost of Jacob Marley makes a big point of trying to find out whether Scrooge actually believes that he's real or not. The ghost is real and Jacob Marley is real. That's dead. But I, I think, uh, I think to your Am point, I like, not speaking English, Tang? Like, I, feel like <laughs> I, you don't, I don't understand, understand the debate. Like you said, there is like readers have a debate. What's the no, debate? I didn't say anyone had a debate. I said, it's interesting to me that, that this is a point that Dickens uh, harps upon. Uh, I, I thought it was a small point that he doesn't believe in ghosts and don't care about it. But other than that, that's, that's the only, that's the only thing I got from it that, you know, even though in death and in life, he kind of ignores his partner as well. So he's kind of like double jerk or double, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's awesome to me that he can be dismissive of his partner's ghost, um, you know, trying to <laughs> trying to say something to him that's basically super important, I suppose. I mean, if somebody's coming back in a ghost form, you probably should listen to them. And he just like, whatever, mm -hmm. dude. And then until uh, his partner's ghost tried to scare him, um, he's like, okay, I'll listen. But yeah, to me, that's that's just a scene. Like, I don't I don't get like the extra importance of it. Um, but yeah. Well, it's a topic of conversation that I was trying to have with you, but apparently you're not open to that. No, I'm. I am open. I just confused. I. I just. It just happened. Like it's, I don't understand what. What else there is to. Uh, to, like. Like how is it any more important than the rest of the story? Like I don't get it. But. Uh, yeah, that's all I got. Like it happened. <laughs> I agree with you, but I don't know. All right. So let's let's move on. Yes. Because this is starting to piss me off. <laughs> Uh, so, <laughs> so um, Jacob Marley informs Scrooge that he he'll be um, haunted mm -hmm. over the over the course of the next three nights by yeah. three different spirits. And he makes a point of saying one will arrive tomorrow at a certain time, and then the next one will arrive on the next night, and the next one will arrive on the next night. Um, and Scrooge is like, well, I don't want to experience that. And and Marley's like, well, if you don't experience it, then you can't, then you can't be uh, redeemed. And so Marley leaves. So I have there's two uh, points there that I find interesting that I am now assuming that you will not find interesting. <laughs> I'll bring them up anyway. Yeah, yeah, no, no, please. Um. So the first one is. And this is something I don't understand. The, the, Jacob Marley says that the first ghost will appear tomorrow night at a certain time. And the next ghost will appear the, the following night. Mm -hmm. And the next ghost will appear the following night. Yeah. But what happens is they all appear on Christmas Eve night. Mm -hmm. And I don't see a reason why there would be a difference between what Jacob, Mar how Jacob Marley describes how the ghosts visit him and how it actually transpires in the story. I think Any it was, thoughts a, on that? I think it's an illusion, right? Like, so, so the way Jacob explained it, it's supposed to happen over three nights. And mm -hmm. we, 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 at the end of the story, this, you know, uh, Ebenezer wake up and find out it all happened the same night. So it like helped him appreciate the time he has left to fix himself and correct himself more uh, because now it's like, uh, I don't know. I think it's just a story format to confuse Scrooge, uh, Ebenezer Scrooge, to, to understand that, you know, it, the impending, um, I guess the impending scared or worriedness of like, you know, this ghost is coming to visit you. So he has time to process the information from, one ghost to another, like a whole day of work or whatever, his schedule. 
so he has time to absorb that information and decide what to do or how to fix himself before the next ghost appeared to him. Uh, but but if it happened like back to back to back, he won't have a chance to like process the information. That's that's really my only but, like explanation of it or how I process it. But it but it it did happen back to back to back. Uh, to me, the way I read it is that he. The, it, it did happen back to back to back, but the illusion is that it happened over three nights. He he lived a whole day of whatever schedule he lived uh, until the next ghost appears. So that's that's my understanding of it. Maybe I, I did it wrong. Well, he goes to bed on Christmas Eve, mm-hmm. and then he wakes up after the last ghost on Christmas Day. Right. So so in his mind, he thought he missed Christmas, but in in reality. He didn't miss it. It all happened the same night. So to me, that's that's like the, the, the illusion part. I That's how I understood it. I don't know if you... Mm. How did you understand it? I don't understand it. That's okay. Why I, right. I, so so yeah. to me, it was an illusion. Like like he he thought it was, you know, the 24th, the 25th, the 26th, and the 27th, or whatever the schedule is for the three ghosts to appear. So he would have gone over Christmas and pass into, you know, approaching the end of the year uh, and then wake up and be late for it. But when he wakes, actually finally wake up, he realized it all happened the same night. So that to me is like the time frame. As, yeah. Yeah. But as he's experiencing it, mm-hmm. um, like he, he meets with the first ghost and then mm-hmm. he falls back asleep and then he wakes up mm-hmm. and he meets with the second ghost. It, there's no sense that a whole day has expired. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know either. That's my, my only thing about it is that it, that's how it. That's how Scrooge would have interpreted this information. So mm-hmm. I don't know if, yeah, I don't know if Charles Dickens explained that timeline either. So not <laughs> obviously to me, that's not like a thing to harp on about. But you know, that's that's the. Well, I thing. mean, it's curious. It's yeah. curious. Like it, yeah. It it makes me think like maybe I missed something. You said there was two sense. two points. Was did, do you have a second point that you were also? Mm-hmm. Curious yeah, about? I do. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Because I have a point I'm curious about, too, but go ahead. All right. Um, So Scrooge, so Jacob Marley appears to Scrooge saying, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to suffer the same fate I, I, I suffered. You know, Mm -hmm. I was, I was a mean bastard in life, just like you. Mm -hmm. And now look at me, I'm, I'm fettered in chains and uh, I'm, I'm forced to, to wander around the, the world, you know, and suffer in misery. But Jacob Marley is offering Scrooge, who is by all measure an even worse bastard than Jacob Marley was probably, um, a chance at redemption. So my question is, why didn't some ghost appear to Jacob Marley to to uh, redeem him? Maybe uh, maybe it did, and we don't know about it. Maybe it did, and he ignored him the same and didn't didn't correct himself. So we don't uh, know his story. You know, I never considered that. I I always thought it was that. Uh, it's evidence that Scrooge lives in a solipsistic universe. What's solip- lipstick? So- <laughs> solipsism is is the. Um, it's like a hermit, just himself. No, well, no. It's that only your own mind exists, and all the other people that you encounter yeah. are just created <laughs> by your mind. So <laughs> no, you, wow, <laughs> you, you you went you went super meta with that one. Now, did you? Well, did you? Uh, well, it, that yeah, explains man. why Marley didn't have any intervention with him, yes. and only Scrooge does. Yes, absolutely. Now, did you arrive at that conclusion or theory uh, when you were, uh, you know, under the, uh, when you were absorbing this story when you were a kid, or, no. or just like recently, or uh, when what was this? <laughs> like within the past five years or so. Okay. No, that's very that's very possible. Um, you know, there's like a bunch of internet people they theorize the matrix movies with the John wick series that, that mm-hmm. I'm a big fan of, um, and then theorize and connect movie theaters together. I'll, I'll send you some of the things that I, uh, I watch on YouTube and it's very possible. That is certainly the case, but I think it just, this is Ebenezer Scrooge story and we don't know about Jacob Marley's, you know? Um, yeah, I so. never considered that, that a ghost did appear to Marley, but he mm-hmm. said, but he didn't go through it. <laughs> yeah, he just like experienced everything. Like, yeah, whatever. I don't care. You know. 
So, All right, so yeah. you said you had a point that you wanted to bring Yeah, up. It, it's more to the center of the plot. So I don't know if you had more to recap, but I was curious about the ghost of the present. So, but, but, uh, okay, you can well, go we'll ahead. get to him. Yeah. We're not there yet. All right. So, okay, so then, so Jacob Marley disappears and Scrooge goes back to bed. And then the ghost of Christmas present arrives. And the ghost of prison, Christmas present, um, shows Scrooge his, takes Scrooge into the past and, and shows him as a boy. And uh, we learn that Scrooge as a boy, his father didn't like him and sent him away to school to, and, and wouldn't let him come home on Christmas holidays. And, and that he had a, has a little sister who was nice to him, Fran or Fan. Um, let's see. And then they visit, uh, Scrooge had a, um, an apprenticeship with this guy named Fezziwig. And he was very nice to Scrooge as well. Scrooge loved him as a boss. And seeing that makes him feel sorry about the way he, he treats Bob Cratchit. Um, and let's see. There was a party scene. I don't know if you had notes for it. Yeah, that's in at Fezziwig's uh, establishment. They... I they thought close that was, up shop. But yeah, I thought that was the focal point of it, but go ahead, sorry. They they close up shop on, on Christmas Eve and, and they have a party and <laughs> yeah. What did you get out of the ghost of the past? Or do you have more to recap? Yeah. Um so then so then there's another scene where uh, Scrooge um has a fiance that and and she's uh at at this point he's he's becoming more wealthy and um, she uh, doesn't have a dowry and she's I guess comes from poor family and um, and so at this stage in Scrooge's life he, he she says that she she suspects that he doesn't want to marry her because she's not wealthy and you know he, he wants money and so yeah so at some point, Scrooge, I guess because his father abandoned him and his mother died, that mm -hmm. he, he feels he has a fear of abandonment and he's trying to uh, trying to make himself feel safe by accumulating wealth. That, w mm -hmm. that way, um, with, as long as he's rich, then, then he'll feel safe. Yeah. Uh, but but going down this path caused his fiance to leave him. Mm -hmm. You know, she basically, you don't love me anymore. And he didn't really do anything to, to stop her. Yep. So, and he, at this, and the older Scrooge, uh, viewing this scene, uh, is filled with remorse. Mm -hmm. So that's, <laughs> that's the, the, then the ghost of Christmas past leaves yeah. and Scrooge goes back to bed. So now yeah. we're on to this, it goes to Christmas present. Let's so, let's talk about each before you recap the whole story. Um, yeah, that's what we're doing. Yeah. Okay. Were you about to go to another note or no. another point? Okay. No, no, no. I just asked you what your point was with the goes to Christmas present. Uh, we'll we'll wait for it until you recap it. But um, <laughs> I thought the ghost of Christmas past is the most to me that was the most important or relevant uh, piece of information. Uh, mm we like in 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 i guess in in normal present uh, culture terms we can see a lot with the freudian right uh basically psychology concept right he he's basically i don't know it wasn't even that messed up uh, there's really no excuse uh, i think you can grow yeah. out of your childhood and then uh but it, what he certainly he certainly had positive experiences yeah. with Bessie Wig and his sister yeah so and his fiance too. Yeah, I, he he's definitely screwed that up. And uh, where, where with the deal with his fiance, he was a young man that becoming like this older version of himself. But that was his. Uh, I think that was like the um, the fork in the road. That was the choice for him to be who he is currently, or mm -hmm. be like the better version or whatever version of himself that he wants to. Uh, he has that was his choice, and he he missed either missed the opportunity or didn't choose. Um, and so now he felt remorse, and I thought that was. That was the most relevant piece of information uh, with with the Ghost of Christmas Past. Uh, that that he was <laughs> to me, he was an idiot. But but I guess in the and I don't know it paint the scene really well why he choose. Um, 
why he choose the the way he is. Maybe he took it so uh, personal and so critical that when he got rejected by his fiance, he just, you know, instead of like uh, fixing the issue, he just fixed the symptom, uh, which yeah. is accumulate more wealth and then, you know, get bitter about it. Uh, so that's my, I don't know. That's why I read when I was reading it. I'm like, oh, he might have just gone the other way because he, he got so bitter by, uh, by, by the rejection. But I don't know if that was in the story or not. So I don't know why. Yeah, he... I no, that makes a lot of sense to me that, that, um, you know, he, yeah, that was a turning point in his mm -hmm. life. And it was a mistake that he, he really couldn't, um, undo. Yeah. Couldn't, could, well, they, he couldn't recover from. Mm -hmm. Well, he, I mean, he does at the end of the story, but he's an old man. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that, that does make a lot of sense. And, I mean, obviously, the the rejection by his father <laughs> comes into play a bit. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Yeah. He, like, yeah. He he. Uh, <laughs> you know, he 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 does the thing where I think uh, I think most people do, including me, and I, I'm very fearful of it. Which is all the characters' uh, faults of your parents. Like like when you grow up, you're like, man, I would never do that. You basically become another version of them, and that's that's just so scary. And I hope, like, I don't know if Scrooge saw that, but but the correl correlation was there, right? Like he he's basically another version of his dad. Uh, yeah. But as a child, he was fine. He was like you know normal, I guess, or you know happy and whatever. Um, and so, like, I remember, or when I was reading this for the first time, I guess listening to it, that scene, that party scene, there was like real joy, and he he kind of misses that joy. Uh, yeah. I don't think he currently experienced it in his normal daily routine or whatever. And so that's what I picked out of it. I, I've never picked that out before from whatever movies I watch. Um, but I remember feeling that. And so I think he, it explains to me that he was normal, but he grew up to become another version of his dad, which is like very real uh, in regards to humans, um, I don't know if you. That is real. Have yeah. you? <laughs> I, no, I've, I've definitely experienced that personally. Have you yeah. noticed anything about yourself that you're, uh, you know, if you're brave enough to share that, you know, like a character trait you didn't like, or it was like, you know, this is the one box I wouldn't do, and then you actually found yourself doing some of that. Is there something like that? Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think I've. I mean, I. I, ins I inherited my father's sense of humor which i'm i i like mm -hmm. um but i also inherited a propensity for like passive aggressive mm. behavior and and shame i think too so. you fit right in with corporate structure <laughs> no i don't when you say passive aggressive what do you mean um so let's see like a passive aggressive but Okay, let's say I'm mad at my wife for doing something. Mm -hmm. uh, instead of talking to her about it, mm -hmm. I'll go into the kitchen and prepare dinner, but like rattle pots and pans and slam oh. cabinet doors, you know, and, and that sort of thing. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah. So when you say passive aggressive, I immediately think of corporate stuff. And I don't know, because you work independent for so long in a, in a team based setting, passive aggressive is like sending an email to another mm -hmm. person. And just not saying the problem, <laughs> but alluding to it. There's a lot of um, yeah, miscommunication. No, it, yeah. it can take many forms. <laughs> I, I just gave you one example. Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. That's that's the, like I think uh, for me it was is uh, analysis by, by paralysis. Like my father definitely exhibits some of that. This would take, mm -hmm. take a long time for him to process. And it's just like, dude, make a decision. And mm -hmm. I think I've caught myself doing the same thing. And so to counteract that, I've, I've, um, I think I've emailed and shared with you before this, this, this blog that I follow. It's, it's a podcast now and a website and all kind of thing, but it's called Farnarm Street. And yeah, I remember that. Yeah, it's all about decision making and mental models. And it's just a way for you to act faster. And so mm -hmm. I, I think I've gone over, basically, I've counteracted too much. And now I'm just, <laughs> I've gone the other way where I have decision making is so fast and it's, I'm so impatient. Uh, but the impatient also is something I recognize from like my mom. She's very impatient. 
very quick to anger. And so I was like, man, I, I have no good traits. Uh, so, um, yeah. <laughs> but uh, reading this part, I was like, okay. I, I remember, and I, I felt like this before. It, the Ghost of Christmas Past is the biggest uh, and most impactful uh, of the story of the three ghosts uh, to me. Hmm. But uh, did you feel they're all the same? They're all on the same level, or or how do you feel about them? Um, I don't know if they're all on the same level, but I think they're all important in their own way. Yeah. Um, cool. Yeah. Um, that, but that's an interesting point that I, I never considered that about um, how we grow up to to become <laughs> versions of our, our parents. I mean, physically, in, in terms of uh, in yeah. terms of Scrooge's metamorphosis, because oh, like, yeah. once he got into manhood, yep. he became like his father. Yeah, yep. that that makes a lot of sense. I like that. He he. I don't. I think when he visited and saw the young man version with his fiance, that was you know a trick. That, that was like the the connection he made to me. When I'm reading it, uh, knowing what I know now, that's how I connect it. I think um, it's not just viewing that critical moment, but also viewing that, man, you know, I've become this version I don't want to be uh, because of the previous when he was a s even smaller child, how he experienced with his uh, his parents experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, cool. Yeah. No, that's good. Thank you, Tim. <laughs> I appreciate that. I always, it's cool to... to I mean, I've uh, over the years I've viewed this story in different ways, and mm -hmm. I'm always I feel like I'm always pulling out new things that I, I didn't realize before, and that that's uh, I mean that's I didn't pull that out. You pulled it out, but um, we should I like that. we should take a few moments so you can uh, share with the listeners how, how much of a fan you are with Christmas uh, Carol <laughs> or story. No, Carol. Like, are you? Would you say you're big, big, bigger fan than you know, Game of Thrones or something? Like, is this pretty much like the Christmas movie story for you? Like, is there like another one that you like more? Um, I uh, I don't know. Calling myself a fan of it <laughs> sounds sounds wrong to me. Um, I just uh, this there's something about the story that resonates deeply mm -hmm. with me that um. I don't know. It's just stuck with me over the years. Uh, and especially when I was younger, it, it, it sort of yeah. had more of a, a hold on me. It, it, I do feel the hold is sort of leaving me as I get older, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but it stayed with me for a very long time. And I think it, cause I think at this stage of my life, I'm, uh, I've addressed some <laughs> demons that I had not addressed or kind of, was unwilling to address for a long time. Ah, so I okay. think that this, that's why this story was mm. seemed uh, so relevant. Gotcha. You know, so yeah. Or touched me on such a deep level. Yeah. So, but as far as like drama or something like that, you know, you, you like other works more, I assume, but this one, I guess is more um, a redemption arc. I think uh, I like uh, certain other movies too for redemption arc, but for Christmas, I don't really particular have a favorite, but but you've read or have listened to this audio or the book, uh, you know, like a few times, right? Or, or a lot? Oh, or... Yeah. My, yeah. I, I have a printed version. I've read many times. I've, I've listened to this audio. I, I, I've watched the movies. I, I um, yeah, I, I, around this time of year, I, I always kind of go back. Yeah. Re, Reconsume it. Yeah. So. Cool. Cool. Yeah, so I mean, so even though it, it it doesn't have the emotional hold on me that it used to, which was because I I just wasn't aware of why it was impacting me, which made it more emotionally impactful. Mm. If that makes sense. Yeah, no, absolutely. Because <laughs> it, it was it was touching something. Yeah. That that needed to be awakened or whatever. Um, I still have a, kind of a reverence for the story, just because <laughs> it's been with me for so long. So, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's move on. The, so the ghost of Christmas present is like this. He appears later on in the night. Um, he's like a big giant of a man wearing a, a robe and carries a horn of plenty. And he, he's kind of like a kingly figure, a very masculine, uh, bearded man, uh, booming voice. He's very judgmental, too, as it turns out. Um, so he's 
so Scrooge is lying in bed and he sees light coming under the door from a, an adjoining room and he he goes in, into that room and the, the ghost of Christmas present is in there and the fireplace, there's a huge fire in the fireplace. This this giant of a man is sitting on a throne of like turkeys and other produce and just, okay. there's just a, yeah. it's like a throne of abundance that, that he's sitting on top of. Um, and uh, and that's and basically the, the ghost then takes Scrooge out into the city and 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 shows him like the abundant marketplace and people celebrating Christmas, people be, people being nice to each other in the street and, and you know so all this abundance and good cheer, basically saying you know look what you're missing out on I guess you know yeah by by walling yourself up in your counting house. Uh, then he takes him to the um, the Cratchit home, and Bob Cratchit has a big family, and they're it's kind of a tight, tightly knit, uh, warm, non-passive aggressive family, uh, non-dysfunctional. It's it's very functional, but they're poor, uh, but they still make a good show of it, and they they prepare this Christmas dinner, and they all sit around the table, and they're all very happy and loving with each other, and. Um, you know, and again, to say, you know, hey, Scrooge, this is what you're missing out on, you know, mm -hmm. by, by living alone and just going after money. Um, Bob Cratchit has a, a son, Tiny Tim, who uh, is crippled. He walks with a, with a crutch and uh, Scrooge feels a lot of compassion for him when he sees Tiny Tim. And he asks the ghost, you know, will Tiny Tim survive, which I guess... At that time period, if you were crippled, there was more of a was, there was a chance you had a highly higher likelihood that you would die at a young age. I'm assuming that's the case. I'm not, not sure exactly why. Yeah, having a lame leg would would give you less of a chance to live. But yeah, I think there's some kind of underlying medical situation there. But you know, I don't yeah. think Charles Dickens explained it. But that's I think that's what we're supposed to take from that. But, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so again, Scrooge is, has compassion for the kid, uh, which kind of surprises even Scrooge that he would do that. And he, um, I guess we're supposed to connect this to him seeing himself, uh, you know, with the previous ghost when, when they visited his school and he was a young boy left alone. Mm -hmm. um, maybe there's a connection between, you know, the innocent, uh, an innocent child being dealt a bad hand, basically. In life. Um, so, okay. Um, and, oh, and then Bob Cratchit toasts Mr. Scrooge, the founder of the feast, and then everyone else in the family is like, you know, screw that. I, you know, yeah. I'm so mean to you. Why, why, why would you do that? And Bob Cratchit is like, come on, it's Christmas Day. You know, yeah. Come, don't be mean. Well, why? I was kind of confused by that scene. Um, hmm. Like, why did Bob Cratchit do that? I mean, did 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 um, did Scrooge give him the money for the Christmas dinner? Like, I don't get it. Uh, well, no, Scrooge pays his salary, which right. Uh, but why so would you? <laughs> used to is, do you do you think Dickens wrote that because Bob's supposed to like Scrooge so much, or? That's how you do it back in the day. Like I, 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 I was confused by that. No, I think it's it, it's kind of a picture into Bob Cratchit's soul. Like he's, yeah, he's just want to say he's thanks. not a hard, okay. he's not a hard-hearted yeah. guy. He's a he did a shout out. <laughs> he, he's, he, yeah, I mean he's he's poor, but he's still grateful. That, yeah, okay, for I his get life it. and his family. And, he just super nice. And, yeah, and strange. <laughs> I was like, what? What are you doing? But okay, now I get it. All right. Yeah, continue. <laughs> <laughs> so then uh, the, the spirit takes them around and they wander around the city observing more people, um, uh, celebrating Christmas. And some of them, some of the places he goes, like he, he goes to a, a coal mine and the miners, even though they're living a hard e existence, they're singing Christmas carols. And the, um, he goes out to sea and visits this ship and there's sailors and they're mm -hmm. singing Christmas carols and there's a lighthouse and you know it's stormy and 
but they're inside with a fire and they're drinking and singing Christmas carols. So it's it's like, I, I guess the message is, um, you know, you can you can make of it. You can make of Christmas or anything. I guess yeah, what you will. It, it's kind of like your attitude towards things. Yeah, which harkens back to um, uh, the subtle art of not giving a fuck, right? <laughs> where uh, yeah, you know, it's like. You can't choose the situation you're in, but you can choose your attitude towards the situation. Yeah. So I think it's a similar message there. Uh, then the ghost of Christmas present takes them to Fred's house. Fred is Scrooge's nephew. Mm. Um, and they're having a party there and uh, they're enjoying themselves too. And, uh, and again, Fred, Fred is like... Um, actually says something nice about Scrooge too. And everyone else around him is like, why are you so, why are you so nice to your uncle? You know, he's so mean to you. And he's like, you know, I, um, I think his, his, uh, offenses carry their own punishment. Like, mm -hmm. He's mean to everyone. And, and look what it resulted in him yeah. living alone and being <clears throat> bitter and resentful. And, you know, and so I, uh, Fred says, so I, um, plan to offer him, an invitation every year just you know because yeah. it would be it would be a nice thing if he could climb out of that situation mm -hmm. um so yeah um and i that's that's kind of interesting to me because um like we make these psychological prisons for ourselves yeah and it's and other and if another person um you know, maybe because of that prison, you're unpleasant to, to someone else. And they're like, oh, you know, Tang's, Tang's an asshole. Yeah. But, uh, but, you know, it's really like, so, so it's in a sense, like you're, you're a victim of yourself. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and, and so like maybe, yeah. So yeah. It, it's a more complicated thing than just a person is a jerk, you know, and therefore I should not like them. <laughs> well, you, know? you want to be, if you want to be extra nice, but, and, and to the nephews, um, you know, a credit, he is the nephew and he, he loves his uncle. So I guess that's, that's fair. But, um, yeah, I think, do you have any more notes or, or, um, we can, we can, is that, is that it for the ghost of Christmas present? <laughs> well, I just, I, I, I don't know. I'd I'd like to further, yeah. No, I mean like we can hash out this idea because I, I'm not sure I fully understand it myself. But it, it's, you know, it, it's there's an idea that even a person who is mean to another person is is not necessarily at fault for their meanness. Yeah. I mean, in a sense, in a sense, I mean, they are you are responsible. Uh huh. Um, but in another sense. There could be other, you know, there's, it's complicated. You have your whole past and you have all yep. the people who influenced you and you have the way you constructed your own psychology and maybe yep. you, you put up like defensive measures and, and yeah, you know, you there was a, um, so like the, the, another version of this story is, uh, Ricky Gervais, the, the comic. I don't know if you watch his stuff, but he did a movie called ghost town, uh, where he played, Pretty much a similar version, except he's not like a rich dude. He's just like a, a dentist. Um, mm -hmm. And then he didn't see the, the three different ghosts. But basically, he he goes through a redemption arc uh, also. And I found it's like, yes, it's his fault, but he didn't realize it. Uh, at one point, he has a partner. And it's like a, another dentist in the office. They share like a, you know, like an office. And the other dentist had like a little um, get together birthday celebration, like very tiny. It's like three people in the office just celebrating something. I think it was like the kid's uh, birth or something. And so he's like, uh, I understand him. He's like, he hates people. He hates party. So instead of saying no, he lightly walked out of the office and leave through like a back door. But the partner saw like, like glanced over and saw him do that. Right. Like it's basically rude. Right. <laughs> But he's like, the end of the day, he's tired, he's grumpy, he doesn't care. And so he, you know, later on, he's like, at what point does it cost you so much to, you know, be the way you are and behave the way you are? 
that you know you're not even enjoying uh some of the things you are like like how much is it worth to be rude to you uh to be rude to other people uh and that that kind of like to me when i watched the movie uh, among all the other stuff because it's kind of like a comedy like he's a comic so it's like funny and you enjoy it but that that to me was like the critical and it's only like 20 seconds it's, but the biggest scene is that he didn't realize how his behavior affect other people he would just in his own mind all the time um so i think that's that's how this scene plays out to me but overall i thought if, if you're done with recapping the the ghost of the christmas present is kind of a waste um i thought he only needed two ghosts the past and the future the present is like uh if you're not aware it shows all this stuff that he doesn't know uh and it shows me that that scrooge isn't aware uh so so I know I'm a jerk <laughs> mm-hmm. in 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 a tons of different way and and I I pay the price for it and I'm okay with paying the price for it but to <laughs> me Scrooge is, d- d- doesn't even realize that he his behavior affects other people a certain way which means he lives in a vacuum in his mind all the time and it's like that's very unrealistic I mean you can do that but it doesn't last very long uh typically something happens where you're like Oh, <laughs> how I do something affects other people. Okay, maybe I should fix my behavior. Uh, it doesn't last years in in regards to Scrooge. It shouldn't last years. Um, so <laughs> I don't know. There's there's bitter old people in the world. I mean that that does yeah. exist. Yeah, that definitely exists. But if they haven't watched like Dennis the the Menace back in the nineties, I don't know if you ever see that. Like guy that just get off my lawn and it's like. How do you not know that? Uh, <laughs> how do you not know all the kids in the neighborhood like fear your house or, you know, you're. Well, it's, it's kind of a self fulfilling prophecy or self replicating or a, sustaining. What, called? a vicious, vicious cycle. Yeah. Where, okay, you're mean to other people and then they shun you and then you're pissed off that they're shunning you. So you're more mean. <laughs> and, and it just like, you know, it snowballs. Yeah, and, I suppose. But yeah. Well, the, so there's a couple of lessons. Um, I mean, you asked what's the importance of the ghost of Christmas present. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think he's important. Um, for one thing, he shows Scrooge, you know, like what he's missing out on by being the way he is. And he also, he also makes an argument that, you know, he should be charitable to other people because um you know the scene where the two children are hiding under the Ghost of Christmas Presents uh, uh, robe. Yeah. And he pulls back his robe, and there's like these two ugly, you know, beastly children. Yeah. And he one is ignorance, and one is want. Mm. And uh, he's he's like, beware of. Uh, so the girl is want, and the boy is ignorance. And he goes, beware of beware of them both, but but mostly beware of the boy because on his forehead is is written doom yeah and yeah so like if if society becomes increasingly uncharitable and uh, and Mm -hmm. you know there's larger issues at play here so like if everyone's an asshole to everyone else uh, yeah eventually things start to fall apart yeah so um so i don't know i i think that's important i think that's it's very important but i think it could have been lumped in like i don't know i don't know it's just like the future and the past matters more and the present is like knowledge in regards to it definitely is important but i don't get how scrooge doesn't know all that stuff like like how can you be so oblivious uh and this bring me like i was watching a a, maybe this will help it because i was watching a a video essay on this movie called parasite uh i don't know if you've heard of this movie it's a korean movie (laughs) Korean movie, yeah. Yeah, I, it, I've heard of it. I haven't, I haven't seen it. I, I, we'll probably have to do an episode on it because it explained this exact issue where Scrooge is just completely unaware of all the suffering that uh, goes around him, and also the joy that can be had without him. Uh, I think <laughs> lots of people are like that, though. Tim. Yeah, I mean, it's it's really sad movie. to me because <laughs> that's why they made that movie, or the director made that movie because it's it just in and of itself is a good movie. Uh, but also it's almost like an essay in our culture. And I, you know, there's a reason why I want to go to space and leave humanity. Uh, Cause I just, mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm so, I'm so disgusted by the amazing unawareness of, of people. Um, but yeah, Scrooge is like a symptom well, life, of that. 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, life life can be hard. I mean, you can go through shitty times and you're in survival mode. Now, it's hard to argue that Scrooge was in survive, survival mode because yeah. he was so wealthy. But yeah. um, in in like a psychological sense, he was in survival mode. Yeah. No, I have no mercy for Scrooge. I think he should go the way of his partner. Um, because uh, it, it just it just doesn't make sense to me. Uh, I understand it's a you know a redemption arc. He becomes like a he re, he re, you know redeem himself. But at the same time, it how long does it take before you break out of that? And so like, I thought that message about um ignorance and want makes sense. But I wish I could lump it to like you know goes of future past or present or or future oh goes of the future or something like that it could, i mean it's a short it's a short story as it is i mean yeah. why do you want to <laughs> yeah yeah i just didn't get it how he's so unaware of the world too so but that's my only my only thing about it otherwise it's a good you know you have to do that i guess it's past present and future makes sense so you can't really yeah what yeah what are you gonna do past <laughs> in the future and then you're gonna get somebody who's like hey where's the present yeah exactly exactly <laughs> cool cool all right yeah let's, let's get and really the present is the only real time yeah yeah the only real time one and i thought uh i mean to the extent when people talk behind your back you don't know about it but you i think you know about it you have a feel you know, yeah. like you, I, I know I'm a certain way to certain people and I know how they feel about me, but it's not like a, you know, the end of the world. Uh, but for Scrooge to be unaware of that, I'm not sure who wrote, goes through life and not know that. Um, hmm. Like, how do you work in a team setting or a corporate setting and not catch the fact that, you know, people don't invite you to lunch anymore or something? You know, there's some point where you like notice something, you're not. You don't work in a unless you're a robot, yeah. then yeah, you won't oh. you won't recognize it. But okay, I, I think I see what you're saying. That that like um, even though Scrooge was a was a, um, a jerk, jerk mm-hmm. it it's it's almost like he he didn't care what other people thought of him. Mm-hmm. But that turns out not to be the case because when he hears <laughs> what they actually think of him, he's like, what? yeah <laughs> so yeah okay i mean that's a that's a legitimate point that's that's the only thing i thought about the ghost of the present is kind of a waste because i don't know who would be like a mature adult and not know that stuff but you can definitely be like scrooge and co- so drawn into yourself you're not you don't know uh you know how how your behavior register with other people and so yeah but so maybe that speaks to the fact that you know ultimately deep down he does want connection yeah which we find out he does in the end, but he's just so afraid of of being rejected, maybe or, or yeah, or being disappointed. Or, or he's definitely a broken man. <laughs> yeah, it's broken. Okay, so the ghost of Christmas present disappears, and then the the spectral ghost of Christmas future or ghost of Christmas yet to come arrives, and it's a dark hooded uh, figure, uh, no facial features. <laughs> Just glowing eyes and like a bony, bony hands that point in directions and uh, doesn't speak at all, which is interesting. I wonder why the ghost of Christmas future doesn't speak. Mm. I think it's death. So it's pretty simple to me. Like the past is a version of himself. The present, I don't get it. Uh, maybe it's like, a, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I didn't really get that ghost. I was like, why is it like not himself? in the present but whatever uh, and i think the future is just like actual death that's why it doesn't speak um but without a scythe okay. so i i yeah. don't know what did you what did you think of it like it is yeah it is, is it like a dress demon dress being like or Grim reaper a little bit yeah without the scythe but um but even the grim reaper speaks <laughs> <laughs> Right. Uh, yeah, I don't know what Dickens was going for. I was just kind of confused by it, but I but I like it more. But it makes sense that death, like if you're dead, you're not speaking. Yeah. So I definitely like it more than the other two. Unless you're a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like the other two where it was. I mean, the past was a version of himself. I understand that. The present, it was just too much interaction. Are you saying the ghost of Christmas past was a version of of Scrooge? Yeah. Am I wrong? No. Yeah, you are wrong. What is it? It's just like another it's just a, demon. It's you know a supernatural being. Oh yeah, so, not a demon. <laughs> uh, 
I thought the 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 future is the best one. The other two were just too chitty chatty. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes when I was reading this, I was like, did Dickens wrote this for normal people or like little kids? Because when he describes certain things, I, it felt like I was reading Cat in the Hat. You know, it's like there's little rhymes and rings to it. I'm like, what is this? A song? Like, could you stop? Like, just tell me what's going on. You know. Um, Have you read other Dickens stories? Uh, in school, I was. I read Great Expectation. I want to say mm-hmm. I read Oliver Twist by myself, but I don't remember. Um, but I'm pretty sure I come. Step- yeah, is it for kids? Right? It's well, no teenagers. It's, maybe it's not for kids, but it's it's for people of the eighteen, you know, mid eighteen hundreds. Okay, living in England probably, and I, well, I yeah. guess America too. But and a lot of his stories were published in serial form in, in okay. magazines. So you would get them in installments. Um, yeah. Not, not as like single books, but um, so maybe that has something to do with it. I don't know. Just <laughs> written for a broad audience. Yeah. And, and you know, obviously modern writers don't write the way that Dickens writes. I mean, he, he puts in a lot of, like, you know, the, the rule of, of modern fiction writing is, is show, don't tell. Yes. And yes. He, I feel a lot of that. I'm like, oh, this is exhausting. Dickens does a lot of telling. <laughs> yeah, a lot of telling. Yeah, yeah. I think <laughs> I, I think it's not just for modern writing. It's for any, yeah, uh, uh, any storytelling format. It's just show and don't tell, which is you know easier said well, than done, but still, it's it's come across much easier to absorb when you when you achieve it. Yeah, but I I think at the time it was more the style, the popular style to to tell. To tell. Yeah. yeah. Cool. And, and to do so sort of like in a witty kind of way. But, okay, so anyway, the Ghost of Christmas Future shows up, takes Scrooge to the stock exchange, and uh, there's a bunch of business people talking about someone who died. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they're like, I don't think anyone's going to go to the funeral. I don't know that anyone liked him. And Scrooge is like, hmm, who are they talking about? <laughs> and then they go to a, like a, it's sort of like a pawn shop. Um it it's called a rag the guy refers to himself as a rag and bones man but the so the uh uh the funeral um the undertaker the undertaker a char woman and a laundress show up mm. all i don't know what a char woman is but um anyway they all show up with items of personal items that that they want the rag and bones man to to pay them for and one of the women has uh, bed curtains, and, and Scrooge is like, "Who? Who? You know?" And it, it it turns out that someone died, and they took all this stuff from his house, and they're selling, you know. Mm-hmm. And so Scrooge is like, "Who? Who is this person that they're disrespecting? You know, who died? I can't believe they're." And then, um, and then uh, the the ghost of Christmas future takes him to a bed. And it's clearly Scrooge's bed, but <laughs> Scrooge th- is in denial. And, th- <clears throat> yeah. and there's a body laying on it with a blanket over it. And the ghost wants Scrooge to, to pull the blanket back. And Scrooge is like, I can't do that. And so clearly, like, Scrooge knows it's him on some level, but mm-hmm. but doesn't want to admit it. And then he's like, well, show me somebody who's who's experienced emotion as a result of this death. And, yeah. The ghost shows him a young couple, yeah, and uh, they're happy because yeah, the person who loaned them stop saying yeah, there's <laughs> the person who loaned them money, uh, and you know, uh, died, and so they can, they have more time to pay it back <laughs> because the debt will be transferred. <laughs> and he's like, no, no, you know, okay, show me some tenderness connected with the death, and then so then the ghost. Christmas Future shows him Bob Cratchit's house where Tiny Tim has died. Mm. And then the the ghost takes him to the graveyard and Scrooge sees his own grave there and he connects the dots and figures out that he's the person who died that nobody cares about and stole disrespected and stole all this stuff. And he's like, and that's his breaking point. Where he's like, all right, I'll change, I'll change, you know. Yeah. You know, I'm not the man I was and blah, blah, blah. So um, before we go into the final part, uh, 
Do you have anything to add about the ghost of Christmas future? Yeah, I think it kind of relates to the ghost of Christmas present. And now he, he's not aware of his own behavior, which I don't know. I don't know how you can do that and not uh, like I definitely know when I upset somebody. Uh, I definitely know when I say something or behave a certain way and somebody's unhappy about something uh, that I did. Uh, maybe I'm confused as to exactly why, but you know, you see this in a relationship when people <laughs> or in movies, uh, when people do something, they're like, I don't know what I did. They're like, why are you upset? But you know, something happened. Uh, mm -hmm. For him to not know that, you know, people are not going to care about when you die. It's just like, uh, dude, like, <laughs> How blind are you? Uh, so I think in well, high school. It speaks to the survival mode. You know, like he's yeah. just living moment to moment. He's not thinking about, you know, he's yeah. not projecting into the future really. And he's not. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I guess you can do that. But uh, like, I think it was high school or maybe college. I don't know. It was some some class, you know, it's on like, and I go to, a, I went to a, a Catholic high school. I think it they, they, they. Some kind of spiritual class had me wrote, um, uh, what do you call those things? It's not a biography. <laughs> when somebody died in a the newspaper, they wrote a thing about you. Um, oh, obituary? Yes. You write your own obituary. Uh, mm -hmm. So I don't know if you ever did that before in any other you know, settings or personal development or whatever you want to have. And I think it's healthy for people to do that once in a while or just like just stop and think. And then this reading this remind me of that because I haven't done that for a long time. And you very fast immediately, <laughs> you know, are you doing the things you need to do to, to, you know, when you leave this world, be appreciated the way you want to be appreciated or understood or whatever. And Scrooge is a person I've never thought or contemplate anything like that to me. And I think this scene is shocking to him, but mm -hmm. at the same time to the readers, it's not right. And so it's like, uh, yeah, that's cool. I think the most pivotal for me was the couples that was indebted to him <laughs> and that were <laughs> celebrating. It's like, yeah, <laughs> our collector die. I mean, it's kind of like, you know, the IRS or whatever is just like, yeah, they got new new mandates. They're not people in charge anymore. It's like fantastic. Uh, that, it, well, course, it's in it's interesting the way that scene plays out because mm -hmm. the, the husband arrives home and the wife is like, is it good news or bad? And he goes, bad. <laughs> and she's like, oh, so we're ruined. And he goes, no. Uh, the, you know, the debt collector died. So, <laughs> and so like, but he described it as bad. Like, yeah. you know, so like, I guess it would be immoral to say that someone, <laughs> someone's death was a good thing. Yeah. Um, or maybe he actually felt that way. I, I don't know, but it, 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 they're not just straight up like, celebrating the guy died <laughs> yeah, yeah no, no. They, there's definitely, some reluctance there yeah and, there is some reluctance there uh, not to disrespect disrespect the death but underneath it they were kind of you know quietly happy uh yeah. that's what i remember reading um and so no yeah no that that's true i mean yeah <laughs> yeah that that to me I, uh more than the stockbrokers waging or bargaining over his dead body uh had more of an impact uh i think that's yeah the other scenes, I, I didn't really, I don't know, I didn't feel anything or connect it. But that scene is where I think it hits Scrooge the most, uh, or at least it hits me the most. But yeah, I didn't, I didn't really get anything out of the other stuff. What did you, what did you take from the Ghost of the Future? Yeah, I mean, basically the lesson is, you know, this is this is the ultimate endpoint from living the way that you're, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Living the way you're doing is going to ultimately end up in this place, and you don't want to end up in that place. Yeah. Right. So. Yeah. So okay, so then Scrooge wakes up, finds out it's actually Christmas morning, mm -hmm. uh, and the, the spirits did it all in one night, and he's really happy and he's psyched to be alive, and he. Uh, so <laughs> there's that that classic scene where he opens the window and a young boy is walking by and he says, you know, you there, what day is it today? And the boy says, to die? Why, it's Christmas die. <laughs> <laughs> and he tells the boy to buy the prize turkey. Yeah. And then he does and he sends it to Bob Cratchit's house. Yeah. And then, um, let's see, 
then he goes to church and he's uh let's see he meets up with those two gentlemen that were collecting uh um for the 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 money for the poor the night before and he's he says he's going to give them a lot of money and everything's done on credit though you know it's like nobody actually exchanges money at this in this time period everyone's always like pledging money yeah and like eventually the transaction takes place but there's a lot of like exchanges of promissory notes yeah you know i guess maybe because there was less currency at the time or well yeah because i think the currency is coins right and i think uh, you don't carry a a bunch of them around so you have to you have to collect it later on so i think that's that's what's going on but i get it and plus he's like people trust People trust each other with that, though. Well, know? not so, not everyone. Just Scrooge, I think. Um, I think. Well, no, because he sent the little boy to buy the turkey, mm-hmm. and he said, "Buy it in my name." Yeah. So the the, the kid didn't have any money. Yeah. But he. But his name carry weight. <laughs> well, his name carry weight in town because everybody knows that he's rich, so oh, okay. they can collect. So then on the him. shopkeeper, I guess, just writes down his name and. Ex- We'll expect the money to arrive at some point. Or, yeah, or go or go get it. <laughs> yeah, but but yeah, that's cool. <laughs> so I don't know. A little side note. Um, so then he goes to Fred's house and, and um, for dinner, and uh, he shows up there, and it's a big surprise, uh, you know, that he showed up, and it's a very heartwarming scene. I this scene has brought me to tears in the past. <laughs> And alcohol may have had something to do with it, but um, yeah, on my part. But um, and and you know, this speaks to like whatever psychological demons I, I left unaddressed, you know, in my younger days. That's that's really when this scene impacted me, and mm. I and I didn't know why it was. I mean, I kind of knew why, but I didn't know why. Uh, and I kind of enjoyed the, the emotional release that it brought forth and like, I would look forward to having it, you know, Mm -hmm. and I watch the movie now and it doesn't bring forth that emotional release, Mm. which means that I probably (laughs) have addressed those demons, but I sort of miss having that experience when I watch this movie. Wow. That's a strong (laughs) reaction. No, that's that's yeah. I I'm trying to think if I have anything. Well, because, because Scrooge shows up at the, at the dinner. Mm Mm-hmm. And he's been nasty to these people. And he's he's like, will you have me? And mm-hmm. they're like, of course we'll have you, you know? And, yeah. and that's just so beautiful. I, I, I love that. Yeah. I didn't... To me, it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a good scene. I, I thought, you know, they're the only people um, that's going to give him a chance. But, um, yeah, I'm trying to think of any other time I connected with something. I think... Honestly, I don't know if you ever seen Shawshank Redemption, but I love that movie. Oh, of course, yeah, yeah. I love that movie too. Uh, and I don't have any strong uh, reaction to any movies uh, for you know because just the way I am, I don't really connect to anything uh, on that level. But when uh, the scene, there's a scene when um, Andrew Dufresne is crawling out of jail through the sewage. And then he mm-hmm. reached the little lake or pond or whatever, and he just stand up. It's raining, and he put out his arms like like celebrating that he's free. That's the only time in in the movie stuff that I'm like, wow, okay, that's I get that's it. A death, yeah. death and rebirth scene. That's a, right. A baptism. But there's no yeah. there's no dialogue. Uh, so you have to see the movie because it's. I mean, I guess you can write it and describe it, but it doesn't hit the same way. And um, yeah, I mean. Other than stuff like that, I don't really connect. So Scrooge story, um, you know, I <laughs> I kind of lump it. Other than have that, you felt imprisoned in your life, maybe? Maybe you felt like I don't know. You've been stuck and can't get out of certain situations. I don't know all the time, I suppose. But that movie yeah. is the only one that hit me that way. And I think with Christmas mm-hmm. stuff, it was just like I don't know. It doesn't really do anything for me. Other than the three ghosts uh, function or or. Um, novelty other other christmas stuff stories don't have that uh i think that's why dickens is so celebrated or well people like it so and it's much. interesting yeah it's interesting that you know the the title of this story is a christmas carol but it's not really a christian universe that is depicted i mean yeah. 
the three ghosts and you know the, mm-hmm. whatever however like the structure of heaven or the afterlife is is depicted in, yeah. in is not quite a christian picture yeah but but there are ref, there's like slight references to christmas but there's not like real or to you know to jesus or you know, there's not really any direct mm-hmm. reference to that yeah i think it's more it's, universal than than maybe other stuff so yeah maybe that's why yeah, people yeah. like it so much but uh, it's a very it's like a cultural kind of yeah <laughs> it's more it's more about the culture of christmas than the actual theology behind christmas you know? yeah yeah do you think other people like it because of the same thing uh, as far as connection to any kind of emotional redemption arc? Is that why people like it so much? Probably. <laughs> um, I, I do know that um, like Christmas wasn't the holiday that it is now. Yeah. Um, but prior to this story, like this story really did a lot to create like Christmas traditions and, and like, they, it didn't exist in the same way that it did before the story. So I can blame Charles Dickens for the um, holiday sales and all the crazy shopping that people do well, and all the stupid. Not the, no, not the commercialism part. Of it, <laughs> I know, but, I'm but pretty like, sure it is. <laughs> the cozy, the cozy, you know, family by the fireside, you know, that, uh, you know, it's cold outside, but it's warm and yeah, and, and safe and snug. And, Why wouldn't and you do that? You know, without the story, I think you would have done it anyway. It just people didn't know, um, or or didn't care. I think, I think maybe before this story came out, people had their own redemption arcs, but they didn't um, they didn't know how to do it per se. And this is like a how to guide. <laughs> <laughs> just get three ghosts. Yeah, and, uh, like. <laughs> That's that's kind of the hard part, though. How do you get the three ghosts? Well, um, seems like they have to come to you. No, you have to grow yeah. up and mature. I think maybe in his in in you know back in this so, society, you you have actual misers walking around. Today, mm-hmm. they're called billionaires, and they you just don't interact with them. But <laughs> back in the day, you actually have a rich uncle that you know doesn't like anybody. But like in our culture, that's not very viable. Like you would know you're the rich uncle that's a jerk and no one likes you very, very fast. <laughs> people don't, people don't do passive aggressive anymore. They'll, they'll tweet about you. Uh, so, so, so that's another question. Though. Mm-hmm. Uh, are the ghosts actually separate beings that are intervening in Scrooge's life? This speaks to the solipsism argument too, <laughs> or are they, are they just aspects of Scrooge's personality that, yeah. Are bubbling to the surface. Yeah, I think Jacob his Marley. Dream state. I would say Jacob Marley and the three ghosts are basically his subconscious trying to. Yeah. Uh, it makes sense to me that way, unless you're, I don't know, unless you have another reference point. But to me, that's because uh, because he is so unaware, but subconsciously he is connecting some of the dots himself. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's to me is his, his subconscious like, hey man, uh, trying to talk to him so. He redeemed himself. Correct. You can argue yeah. that, but <laughs> I think you can. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, it's very supernatural, and it's just like exhausting to me when it's all go, you know, like the goes of present and all this stuff. I'm like, all right, just just get to it, man. I don't need to know all this. Um, so, you know, I don't I don't really connect uh, the same way that it's you a typical connect. Tang. Comic. <laughs> <laughs> it's very, uh, yeah. It's just like some of it because I was. Um, I was raking leaves and I didn't, I don't like doing it, but I've been trying to adopt this, uh, uh, this Japanese thing called Ikigai. I don't know if you ever heard of the, the concept or a phrase. No, what is it? I think it's a sentence, but uh, maybe it's a word. It's basically joy in doing simple things. So I don't know. Uh, <laughs> like mm-hmm. instead of hating doing laundry or folding laundry, I'm trying to just, just be in the present and actually enjoy doing laundry somehow. Yeah, make a meditation out of it. <laughs> yes. And so I was listening to this podcast when I was raking leaves and I was like, okay, you know, I, I get it. But if you sit me down and make me listen to it uh, or, or watch this movie, I, uh, I don't think I would have enjoyed it as much because uh, there hmm. is, is very, it's like a poem. <laughs> well, so it's well, like, yeah, it's over it's the top re- uh, on some of the parts. It is. Yeah, it is. Well, I would highly recommend the Patrick Stewart version mm-hmm. of uh, Christmas Carol, I believe it was made in uh, 1990 something. 
but it's it's good. It's the best one. There's a lot of sucky versions out there. Uh, don't I, see the George C. Scott one. That that's horrible. Um, are you uh, biased, or, or are you uh, do you like pa uh, Patrick Stewart? Is that why, or or just because the movie's good or it's well made? I I do like Patrick Stewart, but it's the best made version of a Christmas Carol, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I uh, do you have compared to other Christmas stuff? Do you like uh, this this more than any other uh, story or or concept or um, movies? I like it very much. I also like um, "It's a Wonderful Life," <laughs> which is another sort of a redemption story too, and with a supernatural visitor. Yeah, yeah. But it's not the same. It's not the same story. Yeah, I enjoy Ghost Town. If you, if you haven't seen it, you should. It's not Christmas related. It's just redemption related, and uh, it makes sense to me a little bit more because Scrooge is already rich, and it's like you can solve a, lo a lot of problems. <laughs> like he's he he can manage his problems in one day and and fix everything right, and which he did, uh, realizing that stuff. Whereas with Ghost Town, the guy is not a millionaire or anything. It just his attitude, and that's very difficult to fix. Uh, but of course, there's a supernatural thing, so he he can kind of see himself and his behavior, and was forced to to fix his behavior that way without the fact that he's a rich jerk. He's just a regular jerk, which is very <laughs> I, I can relate to that because I'm a regular jerk. Period, uh, mm -hmm. and so you have to realize that about yourself if you wanna. If you want to fix anything, and that's, I think that's more realistic in modern sense than being a, like a rich jerk, because that's you know you get away with it, um, especially without society. Well, I mean, I think it goes to show that, you know, attitude is the important thing, regardless of of wealth. Right? Yeah, yeah. But Ebenezer fix his stuff by you know uh, giving away his money. Whereas, uh, yeah, I mean, it may, probably makes it easier. Yeah. Is this our official Christmas episode? Yeah, this is our first annual okay. Epic Meta Podcast holiday so, episode. Uh, Merry Christmas from the Epic Meta Podcast. Absolutely. To all our listeners. All listeners, please have a wonderful holiday. Take care. Mm -hmm. Hey there, listeners. Thank you for supporting us thus far. How are you currently enjoying our show? Please share your thoughts with us through Twitter or YouTube, as we're a newer podcast, maintaining our vitality is the utmost important to us. Part of that process is to build community, but most importantly is to deliver content that you enjoy. So in order for us to do those things effectively, please share with us your ideas and all requests, and of course, how you receive the show so far. Perhaps we can do a follow-up conversation to a topic that we've covered uh, not in depth enough or cover a new topic that you find interesting. As always, please like, comment, subscribe, and most importantly, share with someone that you think would also enjoy the show. And of course, as always, be good and be well. Take care.